Hey, everyone. As we mentioned in the daily financial news this morning, we got a busy day of experts for you, and we start off strong. We got Matt from the East Coast. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing awesome, Mike. Good morning to you and to all the folks on One Rental at a Time. <laughs> hey, man, we got three exciting topics today. The first one we're going to do is we're, I want to pull up my course. I want to pull up one of the spreadsheets from what I call Get Your sure. Money Right. Because sure. You know, when I think about our discussions off air and over the weekends and all of that, helping the next generation and helping families, which is really our focus, sure. a lot of them don't understand opportunity cost, right? A lot of them are focused on price tags. It costs X, it costs Y. And I can tell you, uh, as I wrote in the book, the, the one thing that got us going on this path to financial freedom was getting our money right. And that means understanding what comes in, what we have fixed expenses, what is left over. And then you know, when we started, there was nothing left over. How many of us have more month than cash at, you know, at, at the end of any month? That, that was us. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until we kind of went back and we evaluated the middle chunk and we realized we had lots of wants that we were satisfied. And it sure. wasn't until we started cutting them out that we saw our discretionary income or what I call uh, freedom dollars explode. So uh, any thoughts on that before I pull it up? No, I think it's dead on. I mean, with a lot of the folks that I work with, you know, um, late teens, early twenties, you know, that's the, that's the group that I've chosen to focus on mm -hmm. is because I think that too often some of life's biggest financial decisions are being made in those formative, you know, 17, 18, when you're thinking about college. And then once you get out of college, Hey, I've got a job and now let's create my lifestyle house yeah. or, or apartment, almost always car almost always. And I think being able to have that conversation and be very real and transparent in that, I think is going to help people. So that's, 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 that's what we do. Let's do that. I think it's pretty cool. You, you focus on the generation. I focus on families. It's a nice one, two punch. So let me just pull up. Love this it. is actually right from the course. And uh, let me pull this up. And it starts very simple because again, not, not everybody is comfortable with numbers, right? So this is very mm -hmm. simple, right? And the beauty here is this is all automated, right? This, the green sections, as you see here, are inputs, the rose or orange or whatever you call that is kind of calculations. And then the yellow is the important part, right? Sure. So for example, yep. what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get people to put in whatever they make hourly, right? Mm -hmm. I'm having them realize that, you know what, folks, you pay taxes, federal, state, whatever it sure. is, right? Because you, you don't make 50 grand, right? You don't spend 50 grand. You make, you make 50, but you only get 42 or whatever it is, right? Sure. 42 grand. So that I do a self-calculation. And then what I, what I really envision is people just put in the price tag of the thing you're looking at, right? Yeah. You know, here it's a $2,000. I mean, just as easily could be $250. But what I sure. want people to realize is it's not the price. It's the time. In this case, you know, it costs you almost six hours. Are you, and I want people to ask themselves, am I willing to work six hours for this? Right? Yep. And then more yeah, importantly, th this can become a family discussion because really it's kids right? 13, 14, 16, 18, whatever. Yep. Hey, I want the new iPhone or I want the new Xbox. Well, okay, great. Well, your mom and dad make 35 bucks an hour. You know, they, they pay 11% taxes on whatever it is. I don't know what an Xbox costs. We'll save 500 bucks. Well, you know what? You want mom and dad to work 16 hours for that. Right? Let's have that discussion because that's a sure. very different discussion. Does that feel like, and again, this is a starting point. There's another layer, but this is where I want people to start. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think like I talked about, you know, with my, you know, own humble beginnings as a golf caddy, you know, walking the course for six hours and, you know, getting $10 and 25 cents and realizing that I needed a batting gloves. It was 11 bucks. Yeah. That was six hours. I worked for that one batting glove in the pouring rain and yeah. it was miserable. And so I think if people equate what they're spending to the time that they take it to spend, I think that even just doing that evaluation, and it's not to say that you don't ever buy the PlayStation. It's no. just to say, making sure you're going into it and knowing exactly what time you're going to have to, to work in order to achieve that. And I think there's another cost of opportunity, if you will. And I think this is probably where you're heading with this is um, if you do that and you get that item for $500, that's 16 hours you didn't spend working mm -hmm. towards your goal. Yeah, towards something else, right? And it was very clear uh, when you start tagging things, wants and needs. But th so this is this is what I envision mom and dad sharing with their kids. Because, and frankly, there's another level of this, right? Somebody looks at this and goes, well, Michael, you're assuming you have all of your money, right? In this case, you have $31.15 an hour. You've only taken out taxes. That's not how life works, right? 
you you have a sure. job and you're paying rent and you're paying a car payment and you're paying groceries and you're paying you know what else so in the real world right if you really want to have a discussion it's not 16 hours it's actually an entirely different discussion so what i do is i sure. empower people to come in and input their whatever the green again green is where you input what are your housing costs or what's your auto what's your food entertainment and again i have a list of expenses here but we got to fill in mm-hmm. right what are what are the fixed costs because then that becomes Absolutely. what is your discretionary, right? Um, well, and that's, and you're hitting the point home, which is, you know, that discretionary, those discretionary dollars, after you add all these input costs, mm-hmm. it's probably going to look more like for a $500 purchase, it could look a lot more like 180 hours that you're going to have to actually work to create that $500 that you're going to exactly. spend. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. And then we go here more detailed, right? So again, your yearly income, what are yours, your fixed expenses. These are your actual dollars, those dollars divided by a month. Now this is the discussion. So instead of making 40 bucks an hour, you only have $10 that are discretionary, right? That's right. Every hour you show up, you are actually only have $10 that you can choose to do whatever you want with. That's That's the freedom dollars. So again, right? A $60 item is six hours, hundred dollars. You know, this just all plays out. So, you know, a $2,000 vacation, that's 200 hours. That's five weeks. Yeah. I mean, even bigger is like, I mean, that's why in your last line item, their new car, that's why everybody gets a car loan. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's why they can charge $113,000 for a new Escalade <laughs> or $73,000 for a new work truck. Yeah. They can do that because they're getting you on the payment and you look at the payment and you go, yeah, you know, it's cost of doing business on the, on the truck. You know, I looked at them and I honestly, I shuddered and I walked out of the dealership <laughs> and I went home and I really enjoyed my 2002 crew cab GMC, yeah. Yeah. you know, yeah. that I own outright that, you know, I spend about a thousand dollars a year in repairs on and that's fine. Okay. With me. There you go. Yeah. And again, right. This real world, right. Let's just say you want that Escalade and, and let's say it costs $1,100 payment or whatever it is. Right. Cause let's oh God, goodness, God it's expensive. Right. And then, oh, by the way, <laughs> yeah. suddenly your choices change, right? Everything's went up because you have now, instead of $10, you have $7. Because right. you have peeled off, ex- this is the whole needs versus wants, the payment systems, all of that stuff. And then, of course, I do have this legend because, again, I think there's a score. I, I'm trying to push an idea of called a financial health score. And I've lived in all these columns. My family grew up Haven't here. We? Haven't yeah. We all? <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy, right? So, again, yeah. this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get people to think time, not dollars. Because, again, the other thing about time and dollars, we'll just stop this. The other thing about time and dollars is, you, your friend, and your neighbor can walk into the store, go up to the clothes rack or the electronic store and look at a, this is an Xbox again, yep. 500 bucks. I promise you that $500 retail item costs those three families very differently. Absolutely. 1000%. 1000%. You see people that are living the same lifestyle as you, that might be a layup for them mm-hmm. because of their freedom dollars. Mm-hmm. And that might be every last penny completely over leveraged. There's a cold sweat every first of the month when those payments come due. Absolutely. Yeah. You really, that's why keeping up with the Joneses doesn't work. Yeah. It just doesn't. You have to evaluate your own needs based on your own inputs and your own income. Yes. And then make appropriate decisions from there. Again, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. We just, we just know that it's a much more enjoyable life when you're not waking up in cold sweats because i certainly have been there oh yeah i mean again i remember again my family lived in that kind of razor's edge the one to 15 right when i think back now we probably had 200 dollars, which in today's dollars is probably like 500 dollars, maybe 550 but still it was nothing right i remember a flat tire on one of which happened right they happened to everybody just sent my parents into this horrible orbit just spiral yeah. of dysfunction it was yep. I'm like a flat tire cause. I mean, I remember, I think I, I want to say I was 11. I don't have a lot of memories from childhood, but I remember that. I mean, I remember the tow truck company coming and getting in the tow truck, my sister, my mom, my dad, and just watching my parents just cold sweats. It was like, Oh my God, this is what the hell. I mean, I, I yeah. can still sit on that. So you can, and you can cut the tension with a knife and this is taught you're talking about between a tow truck and a tow. Mm-hmm. they knew that that was more than a month of freedom dollars. Absolutely. They knew that, that was all their discretion for six or eight weeks. 
Exactly. And you're like, and you're spending it on a tire and it's just, and that can just get you down, you know, yeah. and living life within that tight of a margin, it makes life more difficult than it needs to be. I get it. Yeah. We lived there. My yeah. wife and I, when we were going through really hard times, the treat for us was the McDonald's dollar menu. Like that was Yahtzee for us. And wow. for us, our freedom dollars were literally that little. We, we had probably less than a hundred free dollars a month, maybe. Mm -hmm. And it was just like, that was the one thing that once a week we look forward to. And it was, we could get out of there for, you know, less than $10 for dinner for the two of us. And we felt like we'd eaten like Kings. Nice. You know? and, yeah. And again, I want people to realize this. You're making these choices all the time. And again, the, the, what I call the sl slippery slope, the people in the middle, the middle class, whatever you want to call you, you're probably feeling pretty good today. Right. You're the folks that get the credit card in the mail saying, hey, do you want another one or you can get a car loan? Realize, realize these levels. You can go backwards. You walk in and buy a new Escalade. You're going backwards. <laughs> You've collapsed the freedom dollars and now you're in the razor's edge and you're oh, it's just just bad. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to help people get their money right, trying to realize that finance, financial freedom begins at home. It begins at that's your home. And that's what some people don't realize. Yeah, you can do real estate investing or whatever you want to do. But unless you set a strong foundation at home, it's going to be rough. Yeah. Well, I think the, the other thing too is, is I think this is where the government sends a horrible example. <laughs> you know, we can't print money. Um, and if you do, that's a bad thing. So don't do it. Yeah, it's bad. Don't do that. Uh, you know, so yeah, to, please don't. Um, so you can't print money. And so because you can't, you can't also really do deficit spending outside of credit cards. Yeah. And so when you do that, you're just taking up your margin for error. And the only thing you can control more than you can control your input or your income, the thing you can control more than your income is your expenses. Exactly. It's yes. a lot of people on, on social media and YouTube focus on the top line. That's, That's nice. Right. It's sexy. <laughs> you know, I get it. But sure. realize the people that I'm talking to already work 40 or 60 or 80 hours a week. That's right. They're raising a family. All this nonsense about, oh, do this. and do it's like, You think it's that easy for everybody? Let's yeah. realize that they're busting their ass and they have something. I want to talk about the middle and I don't want to judge anybody. I just want to nope. shine a light. And if, yep. if you choose to buy the Escalade, I don't give a flying whatever. But mm -hmm. at least let's at least have a reasonable discussion. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you have to look at, so it, like you said, people look top line and the funny thing is, is I love top line, but my favorite's bottom line because Absolutely. that's what matters. That's what, it doesn't matter if you make this big, huge number on the top and none of it gets to the bottom. No, you know, it's, it's all about you, you much, much more likely it, you can control your costs than you can control your income. Yeah, absolutely. You know? And if you do a yeah. much better job as a quote unquote operator of controlling your costs, mm -hmm. you will be in a far better financial position. Just yeah. flat out. Again, I'm focused on having that. I'm, I'm focused on encouraging the conversation. I agree. Right. And you know, what I'm really trying to get to is I want to have the conversation with kids, right? Think under 18. That's that first spreadsheet, right? That's Very right. simple. And again, it's not judging the $500 Xbox. It's just having the kid like so for some kids, they're going to realize that it costs their parents a hundred hours and they're going to go, you know what? No, thanks. I, I will go get a paper route or I, I mean, that's a great outcome, right? Yeah. Have, you know, have, instead of the kids just looking at mom and dad is mommy and daddy Warbucks. Let's have a real conversation. And then the more detailed spreadsheets, you know, for the family, like, okay, well, let's look at the stuff we've already signed up for. Cause that's the real discussion. And yeah. uh, it's, it's proven to be pretty eye opening for folks. So I just wanted to run through that with you. Any closing thoughts? No, I think it's awesome. I think, you know, it, it, it turns kids into understanding the value of a dollar. Mm -hmm. And in our house with, you know, immigrant grandparents and live through the depression. Yeah. I mean, you got a <laughs> flogging if you didn't finish the milk in your cereal bowl. So, oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, <laughs> I remember how about recycling <laughs> aluminum foil that I remember a Thanksgiving dinner oh, at grandma's oh, house. Yeah. Like, what is she doing? Yeah. Like, oh my yeah. God. Yeah. Or the, or the toaster or the toaster box for, for re reheating the triscuits to make them less stale because it, the expiration just didn't matter. So yeah, I think it's so important, Mike. And, um, you know, for those people that are, are entering in this pro in, in this process in life where they're saying, I, I need to, I know, first of all, I need to get my money right. I think yep. that this is a, a great start for them. Very cool, man. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you very much. We'll get on to Anytime. topic number two.